That's my mom and I on Christmas in uh, 2005. Uh, we moved here from Detroit, Michigan with no connections, no friends, two suitcases, and a uh, pathway full of opportunity. We're homeless. This was us in the uh, homeless shelter. It's taken me some time. I love making videos, I love making content. But I don't like sorrow, I don't like grief. I'm a fairly positive person most of the time. But this is the hardest video that I've had to put together. It's the hardest video topic that I'm ever going to cover. That I'm ever gonna put together. Today's December 11th, Monday, December 11th. Five weeks ago, to this date, to this night, was the last night I spent with my mom. It's the last moments I had with her. My mother, Eva, passed on November 7th at 12.40 in the morning after a long, painful battle with cancer. I wasn't ready. No one was ready. My mother was a warrior. She was there that you would have never known you would have never known that she was going through cancer. This was a long journey. Almost eight years. She was a survivor of the first two cancers that she beat. And this battle had reset a little over a year ago. And close to the beginning of the year is when she started her battle against this cancer that had returned. But we accepted it. We accepted the fact that every three months she would have to have a scan and if something needs to be done, it needed to be done. But we didn't expect what had happened in the last four months. We didn't expect my mother to go into such pain, such pain that she couldn't even walk. Her lifestyle her quality of life dramatically decreased in the last four months. And we found out. We found out that the cancer came back with a vengeance. And as a 30 year old young adult going through this, there isn't many resources, which is why I'm making this video. If you're watching this and you are going through a similar battle where you just lost your mother and you're a young adult, it doesn't matter what age you are, but if you're a young adult, 
and you're going through this, it hits you differently. It hits you differently knowing that you're 30 and most folks when they lose their parents are in their 50s, maybe even 60s, some 70s. It hurts you knowing that there's a 30 year gap of memories that could have been made. And it hurts you now knowing that the last holiday season was the last holiday season you would have with your mother. I was raised by my mother. My father was a part of my life. I learned to respect my mother and treat her in a way that others should always treat their mother. Never took my mother mother's lessons for granted. I always kept them in the vault. And when life experiences happened, I was able to say, my mom was right. When I thought maybe she was wrong at times. Oh, I still can't believe it. It's been five weeks. It's taken me five weeks to make this video because I've just, I'm in a state of, of denial. I, the first week and a half, I, I was a walking freaking fountain of tears, practically. You didn't see it everywhere. But I had so much happen in the matter of one week. In the matter of a week, I want to take you through my story here. Halloween. I went out to Vegas for a business trip. I was at SEMA, which is a, a car conference held once a year in Las Vegas. And I received a phone call from one of my mother's doctors. And he let me know that she had been admitted to the hospital after going through some radiation and chemo treatment. He let me know, hey, I know you're on the other side of the country on business, but I wanted to reach out to you, let you know that your mother is in good care. She's in good hands. She'll be okay. When you get here Sunday, we'll go over some plans, but I wanna set up a call tomorrow so you know what those plans may be. I was stressed, but I knew my mom was in good hands and based on the doctor's tone and what he told me on the phone, I thought we were good. That night, so this was November 1st, the 31st, I flew in. Um, I left on the 30th, uh, told my mom I love her, gave her a hug, went to Miami, spent the night with a friend, flight in the morning, was in Vegas on the 31st. Had the first day to walk around and kind of get ready and what I'm gonna do that week. And then on the 1st, I received that call that night on the 1st, I receive another call from a doctor while I'm at a business mixer. The doctor throws terminology at me, legal verbiage, mumbo jumbo, my legal background and whatever you want to call it, helping my mom go through other health obstacles and journeys. I was familiar with what he was telling me, but at the same time I was lost because I didn't understand what exactly was going on. I was told, hey, da 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 he literally, you could hear him. You, you knew he was reading off of a script, just how he was talking. Asking me, do we resuscitate or not? If your mom goes into cardiac arrest or something happens, do we resuscitate her or not? Uh, yeah, well, if we do, she might be in greater pain and be put on a ventilator. Doc, 
I was told she's okay. I asked him one question after having a, a drawn out conversation for 25 minutes. It shouldn't have taken that long, but I, I get, get his side and he understood my side when I told him like, stop being so clear. Stop trying to be so clear and legal. Just tell me, do I need to be there as quick as possible and catch the next flight? Yes or no? He said, yes. That's all I needed to hear. As a son of a mother who sacrificed so much in her life, who left a good life in Europe to move to Italy as a refugee and then move to the United States for to the land of opportunity, I was not going to not be there for my mother. And I made sure before I hung up, Doc, I'm on my way home. As soon as I get off the phone, I will find the next flight, fly to Miami and drive up home. But I need you to go into that room, put me on speakerphone, and I need to tell my mom that I'm on the way home. And he did. He called me from his cell phone. He went into the room. He said, Miss Ava, your son's on the line. He wants to talk to you. And I told my mom, Mom, Doc updated me on what's going on. I'm on the way home. Don't worry, everything will be fine, Mom. We got this. I made sure my mom heard me. I caught a flight. Keep in mind, this is like 9.30, 10 at night in Vegas. I called, get my flight changed to a flight that's leaving at 11.50 in an hour and a half. Went to the airport where I, I was there with a friend. I had him come out, let him know I need to go home. My mom is not in good condition. Uber took me to the hotel. The Uber stayed there for me privately and then took me to the airport. I packed my bags in 10 minutes because I was not missing that flight. And of course, get to the airport and I get taken aside by TSA. But it was okay, because I made it through, got onto the flight, it was overnight, I could not sleep. No matter how much I watched, no matter what music I put on to, to kind of relax me, I wasn't going to bed. And I arrived at 7 a.m. in Miami, my friend picked me up, gave me my car, I dropped him off at work, and I was headed to see my mom. I got to the hospital, at the hospital, I met with the doctor, my mom met with the doctor, and I could see my mom, she was not in good shape. What took my mom was stage four cancer, uterine cancer, gynecological cancer. My mom was a warrior. She was a survivor of the two cancers before. And she was, she was independent. You go offer her a ride in the middle of her treatments, I need to get my exercise in. That's what she would say, my neighbors, my neighbors before they moved out and the newer neighbors who moved in who I wanna thank. I wanna thank them tremendously. But my mom wouldn't take the rides. She needed her exercise, even when she was in pain. When I was at the hospital the first few days, my mom's health was going up and down, up and down. The doctors weren't able to go through with their plan and get her on radiation and send her home. And her lung collapsed. And then the battle truly begun. The most painful days, excruciating pain. Outside of a few days that I that we had here. Two days later, a Saturday morning. It was the last time that I spoke with my mom. That we had a conversation. 
the night before my mom was in immense pain like I've never seen before just screaming pain pain morphine shots morphine shots she was on on drip morphine There was nothing I could do. I was there by my mom's side the whole time, outside of two short trips that I made home, to change, to shower up, take care of the dogs. Thankfully, I had tremendous support from my neighbors, from friends, uh, from colleagues. I thank each and every one of them for helping me out there in this time, coming through, walking my dogs for me, checking in on me, sending me Uber gift cards for food. I can't thank my network enough. My support system was flawless. And I'll make a separate video on that and a separate video on on these different stages that I had to go through of this journey because so much of it can help many of you out there, which is why I'm doing this. This is something that I want you to know if you're watching this and you are helping someone battle cancer, whether it's your mom, your friend, another relative, whoever it may be, if you yourself are going through cancer, and if you recently lost your mom or parent to cancer, more specifically at a young age, know that there's people out there. There's a ton of people out there to help you and support you through this journey. It's a journey that's going to take a long time to get. You're never truly going to get over it. I've accepted that fact. Though I'm still in denial, I'm still waiting for my mom to walk through the door. I'm still waiting for this door to open and close to see what I'm doing. The moment the doctors indirectly told me that there's pretty much no hope that it's time for me to prepare I didn't believe it. I told him we gotta do something. There was nothing. Because the one thing my mom said before she went into the state of, uh, not a vegetative state, but where her body pretty much shut down um, or her nervous system shut down, but she was still conscious. She could hear, move her eyes a little bit here and there, maybe a finger twitch here and there. Before that, all she told me was, whatever the decision is, I don't want pain. And that's where, if we tried to put her on anything more extreme, it would cause pain. And I was in such a position, I'm gonna save this for another video because it's, it's a very touching topic, but hospice care, the choice of hospice care, which way do we go? Do we keep in the hospital? Do we do this? It's tough. I had no idea what I was doing. I was, I was confused at that and I was misinformed about the process of hospice that I'm gonna save for another video. But it took me forever, forever to just start dealing with this. Mom's funeral was a week and a half after and I kept my composure just enough to give a eulogy because that's what my mom deserved. People deserve to know what she had done, how she had impacted people indirectly, directly, and through her network and my network. Because she was a warrior and I wanna make sure that I pass on this legacy of my mother's. 
the legacy of a warrior. Because at the end of the day, two words, I don't care. Fuck cancer. My mom sacrificed a lot. Sometimes I think she sacrificed too much. She didn't think for herself enough. Because she put others first. Because she was a caring and loving mother and she always wanted to see other people succeed. If you're going through this battle, dealing with a parent who's going through cancer, know you're not alone. There's plenty of folks, regardless of your age, whether you're 30, 40, 50, a teenager, there's plenty of folks who can help you get through it. And don't be scared to reach out. Don't be scared to make posts asking for help. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. A good friend of mine, we don't even speak that often. Last time I saw him was maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. But when we see each other, when we text, the conversation always revolved around my mom's. How's your mom doing? She's all right, she's going through this. She's good, we celebrated Christmas, did this and that. His mom was going through breast cancer and I didn't even know. I didn't know because he kept it low key and that's, for his peace and sanity. But his mom had passed just a year and a half ago. I didn't know. But he was one of the first to reach out and give me a non-bullshit answer in response to how to deal with things. Everyone's response is meaningful. But when you go through something so traumatic at a young age and you really don't know how to approach it, the most meaningful responses are the ones who can feel with you. And not for you, but feel with you. They understand what you're going through exactly for the most part. Don't take those, re don't take anyone's outreach lightly, right? Take it in. Everyone wants the best for you. But those who give you the answers that you might not want to hear, like you're never gonna get over it, that's not a challenge. That's not a challenge, yes, I'm gonna get over it. No, you're never gonna get over it. You're always gonna have memories implanted from experiences, food, places. Because here's a fact that I'm slowly accepting is at 30 years old, most folks don't lose their parents. Most folks who are losing their parents are in their 50s, late 50s, 60s, some even 70s. That automatically is easily a 20, 25, 30 year window of memories that you will never have. Think about it that way. And I appreciate everyone who has reached out, sent condolences. I appreciate every single one of you, if you're watching this, who has donated to my mom's Cancer Warrior uh, service and fund. Many, many of those who donated and reached out, I haven't spoken to in years. And not intentionally, it's just, Life picks up, folks have families, folks move away. But I thank every single one of you. There's a handful of you who I just, when I saw the donations come through, I was like, wow. It, it just was surprising. It was surprising to the fact that I saw their name come through with a donation. Not surprising that they donated. These are people who are always good people. Just, you lose contact with them a little bit and you know they're doing good and maybe some of them have families or married and on the other side of the world or country. 
But I thank you guys. And I think you guys know who you are if you are watching this. And of course, there's a handful of people who didn't even show up and didn't even reach out. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony, I'll say that. The more time goes on, the more I see of my mom in me. That's a statement my mom would make. <laughs> Hands down. I'm gonna make more videos and segments on my based on these experiences. But my mom was a warrior and I will continue sharing her legacy through my experiences as her son through experiences that she shared with me and the lessons that she taught me. I'll make sure that her legacy moves forward. I'm keeping my composure up, trying to make it through day by day is hard. It really is hard trying to run a business trying to find opportunities during the holiday. And that's one thing that burns. I lost my mom. Had her funeral Thanksgiving next week, my birthday the next week. Name day, that's a big thing we do in Poland. It's name day. And we have Christmas. Christmas Eve, Christmas, New Year's. It's a tough road. I didn't expect it to be like this. No one does. I love you, Mom. If you're watching this and you still have your mom, give her a hug right now or when you see her. And at least give your mom a call and just tell her I love you. Do it for me. Till the next video, remember to stay strong and you got this. We've got this. One last thing. Fuck cancer.